Applejack had it all wrong, as did every pony else. Spike stopped for a moment to pant. His legs had somehow found a way to burn and shiver at the same time. He couldn't decide what was worse, the fading sunlight, the plummeting temperatures, or the ever-deepening snow. Once the sun set, he would have officially blown the entire day walking around Ponyville. He finally knew who had Rarity's name, albeit by process of elimination rather than any pony actually giving him a useful clue. By virtue of visiting three ponies instead of just one, like he'd planned, he knew it all. Twilight was getting him a book. Applejack was getting Twilight some kind of historical relic. Rainbow Dash was getting Pinkie Pie a new party cannon. Pinkie Pie was getting Applejack a set of pie pans filled with pie-flavored candy. And he was supposed to get Fluttershy something. That just left Fluttershy getting a gift for Rarity, and Rarity getting a gift for Rainbow Dash. Why couldn't he have just drawn Rarity's name from the start? Why did he have to go on a grand tour of Ponyville in waist-deep snow? He paused on Fluttershy's doorstep to rub his frozen hands together. Once the numbness in his claws turned back into dull pain, he reached up and knocked on the door. He'd never been so cold, but it was absolutely worth it. All he had to do was go inside, ask Fluttershy to do a three-way name trade with him and Twilight, and go home to inform Twilight of her role in his master plan. Tomorrow morning, or possibly afternoon, considering how tired he felt, he'd buy Rarity the best hearth-swarming present ever. She'd be so surprised. Maybe she'd even give him a thank you kiss. A quiet but unmistakable sneeze banished all thoughts of romance. He put his ear to the door. Fluttershy? Spike opened the door and stepped inside. The cottage floor was covered in discarded tissues, rendering it as white as the snow outside. Fluttershy was curled up on her couch, nestled between a mound of tissues and what appeared to be an unfinished blanket knitted out of blue yarn. <coughs> Hi, Spike. Are you okay? Achoo! Fluttershy gave a mighty sneeze in response, one of the loudest things he'd ever heard escape her mouth. She reached for a nearby tissue box and shook her head. I've got just a, a little cold, but if you need something... She started to push herself up on her shaking legs. Spike shook his head and ran forward. That's okay. You don't have to get up. Can I make you some tea or... A shiver traveled up his spine, and for a moment he could have sworn that he was still wading through snow. The Ooh. whole cottage felt Ooh. as cold as the wintry evening outside. Fluttershy sneezed again. I'm sorry if you're cold. You really need to conserve my firewood so it lasts all winter. But you're sick. It's okay. I'm just gonna stay right here and rest until I feel better. It's a good thing I'm knitting this blanket as a heart's warming gift. Spike looked down at the blanket. The shade of blue was a little off, assuming she was trying to match Rarity's cutie mark. Still, it did look warm and comfortable. It looks really nice, Fluttershy. Can I make you some tea? Fluttershy's ears shut up. Oh, Angel! He said he was going to make me something, but that was ages ago. Could you check on him for me? He ran to the kitchen. Angel, are you okay? Did you need me to... <clears throat> Spike tried not to laugh and only succeeded by clasping both hands over his mouth. Angel was standing at the base of the oven right in front of the hearth, ineffectually rubbing two sticks together with his soot-covered paws. The death glare he gave Spike looked like more than enough to get a fire going. <clears throat> Do you need a little help, Angel? Angel balled up a tiny fist and tried to look menacing. Hey, I'm just trying to help. I want Fluttershy to get better, too. Angel pointed at the tea kettle on top of the stove and then to a pack of matches resting on a shelf high above. I'll take care of that. Stand back. 
One blast of Spike's fire breath brought the tea kettle to a whistling boil. Angel shook his head and pointed again. What? The kettle's hot now. I can carry it and everything. Angel hopped up on a nearby stool and then onto the stovetop. He stared down at Spike and pointed once again, this time clearly at the stove. Spike touched his hand to the front of it. The only spot that wasn't stone cold was where his own fire had warmed it. Well, of course it's cold. He didn't like the firewood. Angel slapped himself on the forehead and gave the stove a kick. The hollow ringing sound emanating from the hearth finally clued Spike in. He knelt down and looked into the empty spot where the firewood was supposed to go. So you've been trying to light a stove with no firewood in it. Is the wood too heavy for you or something? Angel nodded. He put his paws together in front of him and pantomimed swinging something around. Then he stood up straight and deliberately fell backward. Spike sighed. Uh, you want me to go chop down a tree for firewood? That's a ton of work. That's why ponies just buy the stuff, Angel. A Fluttershy has to have some firewood around here somewhere. Angel hopped up and down on the stove and waved his paws, clearly disappointed with Spike's sudden rummaging through the kitchen cabinets. Finally, Spike threw open a wide floor-to-ceiling door next to the back window. The firewood labeled next to the handle should have been his first clue. Aha! I knew she'd have... some... He didn't know what to say. Just like Applejack's pantry, the cabinet was neither bare nor fully stocked. Small bundles of logs, each barely enough to ward off a winter's afternoon, were tied up with yarn and labeled with little strips of paper. He brushed a claw against the dainty writing on the nearest paper label. Each little paper had a date on it, and he could only assume that today's firewood ration was now nothing more than soot. This... this is all Fluttershy has? She wasn't kidding about saving it so it lasts all winter. Angel jumped in front of the dwindling firewood supply and stared Spike down. He repeated the tree-chopping pantomime with one paw, while the other pointed at the door. Spike winced. He already felt numb just thinking about performing hard labor out in that cold. Still, arguing with a bunny wasn't making the cottage any warmer. Ah, fine. I'll go find more firewood outside. You get Fluttershy's tea ready. Angel nodded. That was the closest they'd ever come to having a civil conversation. Two hours later, Spike collapsed in Fluttershy's easy chair and surveyed Angel's and his work. A fire was crackling merrily in the hearth, thanks in no small part to several blasts of his fire breath to fell a tree, section it into logs, and finally to convince the icicle-laden wood to catch fire. Fluttershy now had two winters worth of firewood, at least. Angel hopped into the room with a warm blanket in his forelegs. He shot Spike a look, which could have been anything from simple tolerance to genuine approval, and offered the blanket to Fluttershy. The heat alone seemed to have done wonders for her. She was seated upright with a basin of hot water in front of her, a mug of tea in her lap, and a quill draped over her back. The mountains of used tissues were gone thanks to Angel. In their place was a small wastebasket that Fluttershy hadn't even filled halfway. Fluttershy glanced up and saw Angel holding out the blanket. Oh, that's all right, Angel. I feel warm and snug already. Maybe Spike would like it? Angel gave Spike another look, studied the blanket for a moment, and held it out to him. Spike's jaw dropped. This couldn't be the real Angel. The real one, the bunny that only ever treated Fluttershy nicely, at least on occasion, must have been replaced with some sort of changeling replicant. He took the offered blanket all the same. Uh, thanks, Angel. We, we made a good team, right? Angel crossed his forelegs and gave a small nod. Fluttershy giggled. <laughs> he certainly did. I 
feel so much better already thanks to the two of you. Angel's previously limp ears perked up, and he gave what looked like an actual smile. At last, Spike felt at ease. Everything was getting back to normal. I'm so glad you're doing better now, Fluttershy. Why didn't you come and ask some of your friends for help when you got sick? Fluttershy looked down into the water basin. I really should have. I know you're all so busy, though, and I wouldn't have wanted to run my surprise. Her gaze drifted to the unfinished knitting project on a nearby end table. I guess you know who it's for. Do you think she'll like it? Are you kidding? What pony wouldn't like a hoof-made blanket? I know Rarity's a seamstress and everything, but she's gonna love it. Rarity? Her ears shot up. Well, yeah. You're trying to match the color of her cutie mark, aren't you? Fluttershy stared at him for a moment and finally shook her head. N no! Didn't you see the pattern? Before she could even move an inch, Angel darted forward and retrieved the blanket for her. It started to unfold as he carried it, and at last Spike realized what he'd missed. Right in the middle of the solid blue expanse of yarn was the beginning of a rainbow-colored lightning bolt. Spike's jaw dropped. But... Rainbow Dash? Fluttershy nodded. I was so worried when I drew her name. She always acts so tough, but cloud houses get especially cold in the winter time. I, I get that and everything, but... He hung his head. Spike, what's wrong? You're not getting sick too, are you? No, I just don't understand what... And then he did. Spike jumped to his feet. I'm glad you're feeling better, Fluttershy, but I need to go. Fluttershy nodded. Thank you so much for coming to see me, Spike. Is there anything I can do for you? That's okay. You just rest. Rainbow Dash is going to love that blanket. You've got everything here covered, right, Angel? Angel stood up straight and saluted. Spike gave him a thumbs up. Great. I've got one more stop to make. Spike had it all wrong. Ponyville in winter wasn't picturesque, at least not at night while trudging through waist-deep snow. He hurt nearly everywhere, and wherever he didn't hurt, he was numb. A whole day of walking, and worse, lay behind him, and grasped in his claws was the same slip of paper that he'd started with. Against all reason and logic, he still had Fluttershy's name. He'd visited every pony who could possibly have Rarity's name. All except for one. He made a fist and pounded on the boutique's door. Rarity? You're home, right? We need to talk. He stared up at the dark sky. Fresh snow was falling in moonlight. Under better circumstances, he would have called it beautiful or even romantic, considering whose doorstep he was on. Not tonight. Tonight he'd gladly roast the snow out of the sky, not to mention any and all hearth-swarming decorations in sight. The door in front of him creaked open, and Rarity peered through. Her sleep mask was perched on her forehead. Spike... I must say, it's rather late for a lady to accept a gentle dragon collar, don't you think? I know what you did. She stared at him, dumbfounded. Pardon? Remember the whole gift exchange you convinced all our friends to do this year for hearth swarming? Rarity held a hoof up to her mouth. I, I can explain, Spikey. He crossed his arms. I'm listening. She shut her eyes and sighed. Come in out of the cold, won't you? Spike followed her across the threshold and shut the door. The shop felt even warmer than Fluttershy's cottage. The dim candlelight illuminating the dresses on display gave him fleeting romantic thoughts, and once again he pushed them aside. You drew your own name, Rarity, and you didn't tell any of us. You rigged the whole thing. Rarity bowed her head and gave a deep sigh. <sighs> You're correct. May I 
ask how you happened upon this discovery? Spike held out the paper he'd been clutching. Because I've been trying to trade for your name all day. I walked all over town for you, but no pony had your name. At first I thought it was some kind of mix-up, but then I remembered whose idea this whole gift exchange was. She nodded. As odd as this may sound, I do in fact have a very good reason for orchestrating all of this. Why? Why, well, I really wanted to get you something great for hearthswarming, Rarity. We've been spending so much time together lately, and I just don't understand. Why do an anonymous gift exchange? Why rig it? Rarity walked to the nearest dress on display and slid her foreleg along the neckline. Her hoof caught on a small loop of string, and she plucked it off the dress with her magic. The string and the price tag attached to it floated through the air and landed at Spike's feet. He stared down at the considerable number of zeros on the tag. Spike, most of the dresses I sell are quite extravagant, both in appearance and in price. Such is the nature of the fashion industry, but what I mean to say is, I'm a pony of considerable means. I could quit making dresses right now and eke out a frugal existence for many years using my savings. Some of our friends, however, some of them aren't as fortunate as I am, and yet are unwilling to accept all but the smallest forms of financial assistance that I could offer. I don't begrudge them for it, but it pains me so when any pony falls on hard times. She returned the price tag to its respective dress and took a seat on the floor facing it. Her ears limp and her back hunched. I've come to dread this time of year. I simply detest burdening all of our friends with the task of buying me gifts. I work so very hard at being generous, and the scent of your season makes me feel that I've failed, that I've somehow amassed more possessions and wealth than I've given. I'm sure that isn't actually true, but... She sunk to the ground and hid her face. Her whole body quivered as she wept. Just once, I wanted her swarming to pass by, guilt-free. Spike ran to her side, and after a moment of apprehension, equal to her distress, placed a shaking hand on her back, in what he hoped was a comforting gesture. I'm... I'm sorry, Rarity. I'm sorry this season is so hard on you. But... but I can't let you go through with this. Rarity looked at him. With mascara-stained disbelief. But... We're your friends. We like giving you stuff. And you deserve a nice hearthswarming gift just as much as the rest of us. I can't let you get nothing for hearthswarming Eve. That's just awful. She grasped one of his hands between her hooves. Please, Spikey Wikey. Receiving nothing from any pony is what I want more than anything this year. Please, just let me give myself a trinket out of my jewelry collection like I planned. I can't bear another winter wrapped with guilt. But that's not what the gifts are about. They're supposed to show how much we all care about each other. That we spent time getting something that'll make some pony we care about happy. Isn't that- Spiky? She stared into his eyes. I've... I've got an idea. If you trade with me your name for Fluttershy's, I swear I'll make this the best heartswarming Eve you've ever had. Spiky. Rarity's sniffing ceased, and she lowered her eyebrows. Spiky, I most certainly do not need the sewing machine that you've been eyeing. Spike shook his head. It's not like that. I... How did you know that's what I was going to get you? She managed a coy smile. I do notice more than the contents of shop windows during our walks through Ponyville, Spiky Wikey. He blushed. Well, I won't get you that. I swear, I won't spend a single bit on your present. It'll be what gift giving is really supposed to be about, and that's it. He held up the slip of paper with Fluttershy's name on it. And Fluttershy could really, really use some warm winter clothing. Her cottage is like a freezer. Rarity sighed. I certainly can't let Fluttershy freeze, but you must promise that you won't go out of your way for me. Nothing fancy. Nothing expensive. Spike nodded. I promise I won't do anything crazy. No more than I already have, anyway.
<laughs> Time flew by, as it always did, at least until heartwarming Eve finally rolled around. Once again, Spike was seated at the castle's table with his six closest friends, and once again, Rarity was in the chair next to his. Her smiles and stolen glances were all the more frequent tonight, although he could detect something new in her eyes. All night, she'd been asking him a question without uttering a single word. Did you keep your promise? She'd find out soon enough. The usual gift-opening frenzy had given way to a sort of procession around the table. Presents were being opened one at a time, and each pony's reaction was priceless. Or at least, that's how Spike assumed their reactions were. Knowing all the gifts in advance, kind of spoiled the surprise. Still, it was one thing to find out Pinky was getting a new party cannon. It was quite another to see her swinging from the chandelier above the table with a freshly singed tail. Applejack pushed the still-smoking party cannon a few inches further away. Not sure my ears could take 20 more of those all at once, Pinky. Pinky reached down and flicked Applejack's hat. Just fill your ears up with all that candy. That's what I do. Applejack glanced down at the candy-filled pie pans in front of her and then to the five empty wrappers she'd piled next to it. That's just hypothetical, right? Rainbow set her back hooves on the table. Her new blanket was draped over her high back chair, displaying its perfect rendition of her cutie mark like a national flag. She gave a deep, satisfied sigh. I'm gonna tell ya, whoever drew my name really knows awesome when they see it. I can't decide if this thing belongs on my bed or on the wall over it next to my Wonder Bowls posters. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely wearing my new winter coat to bed. It's cozier than all my blankets combined. Fluttershy giggled. She'd nearly disappeared in the fuzzy depths of her new winter coat. With the hood pulled up, she looked more bunny than pony, complete with decorative paws on the cuffs and rabbit ears on the hood. Bed? B but it's not bedtime yet, right? Twilight jolted in her seat and for a few seconds looked up from the large picture frame clutched in her hooves. I still haven't figured out where I'm going to hang this. Rainbow laughed. <laughs> Twy, it's just a... It's not just anything. This is a copy of the very first land grant that Princess Celestia issued to the founders of Ponyville. You can even make out Princess Celestia's signature at the bottom. The old library didn't have a copy of this. Twilight turned the frame around and held it up for all to see. She returned the frame to her loving embrace and brushed a hoof against the glass cover. I don't even know how you got this, Apple. Uh, you ever got me this? But thank you. Thank you so much. Spike met Applejack's gaze, just in time to catch her approving nod. He could almost hear her saying, Thanks a million, Sugar Q. A book-shaped present slid across the table in a blue aura and came to a stop under Spike's nose. Rarity smiled at him. I believe you're next, Spikey. He put on his best smile and tore at the wrapping. No matter what kind of book Twilight gave him, he knew she'd put a lot of thought into it. Even if that thought was how much he'd love learning about advanced math, ancient unicorn history, or the origins of saddles. Gosh, I wonder what this is. The wrapping paper peeled off the front cover and he read the title aloud. The Life and Times of Spike the Dragon? He flipped the book open and glanced through the surprisingly empty pages. Half of each two-page spread was dedicated to a lined box labeled, What Happened This Week? And the other half was split into columns labeled with the days of the week and times of the day. At the bottom of each day's column was a series of checkboxes with labels like Big Project, Out of Town, and to his great surprise, On Vacation. He flipped back to the first set of pages, the ones covering Today and Beyond, and saw that the vacation checkboxes were already checked for the rest of the week. The day columns had been overtaken by the message, 
do whatever you want. He flipped through the pages, catching more pre-filled vacation days with notes like comic book convention and sapphire season. Twilight had found at least one event per month that he'd typically forget about or not have time for. He'd never had anything like this before, and yet having it made so much sense. Keeping Twilight's schedule straight was complicated enough. Factoring in time for himself, and remembering what he'd actually planned on doing, was next to impossible. <laughs> Rainbow Dash flew low enough that Spike could feel her breath on his shoulder. It's a planner? Or a journal? Or something? It took Spike a moment to nod. Yeah, and it's actually pretty cool. Tomorrow I'm... on vacation. He looked over at Twilight, who gave him a smile and a wink. Applejack cleared her throat. <clears throat> Looks like you're up, Rarity. Fluttershy's coat rustled as she sat up. Um, are you okay, Rarity? You're... Not breathing. Rarity coughed and gasped. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine, Fluttershy, dear. I was simply wondering what could possibly be in a package this substantial. Every pony, Spike included, followed Rarity's gaze. The last present on the table was indeed large. Two of those top of the line sewing machines would have fit inside with room to spare. Rainbow Dash grasped the box with her hooves and gave it a shake. It's heavy, whatever it is. Guess that means it's not dresses or something. Applejack chuckled. <laughs> Unless they're dipped in gold. The box glowed blue and slid to Rarity's side. She put a protective hoof on it. Please, Applejack. A dress made of solid gold would be garish and practical and... She fixed an eye on Spike. Completely unacceptable. Pinky fell from the chandelier and landed in her chair. So open it already! Let's see the unacceptable dress! Spike watched the wrapping paper slowly come undone. Rarity somehow put more finesse and elegance into unwrapping the present than he'd used to wrap it. Part of him wanted her to just tear the paper off and get the surprise over with. He was so sure he'd done the right thing. At least until all his friends gasped. A sturdy wooden chest stood on the table, as large as it was plain. Applejack scratched her head. Huh. That's an interesting gift for a fashionista. Rainbow folded her hooves. Yeah, it looks so... simple. Is there something inside? Rarity took a quick peek under the lid and shook her head. No, it's completely empty. Then why do you look so happy? Rarity smiled and ran her hoof along the edge. To you, it might look like a simple chest, Rainbow, but I see a blank slate on which to express my creative vision. With a fresh coat of varnish and a few decorative flourishes, I think this would be perfect for holding fabric swatches in my inspiration room. Ugh. Well, as long as you like it. Rarity gave Spike another glance and nodded. I do. Thank you, whoever gifted me with something so practical. Another blast from Pinky's new party cannon shook the room, and confetti rained down. Pinky jumped up on the table and donned a party hat. So, who's up for some harsh for me party games? Spike smiled. At least... Rarity was content with the gift. Hopefully, after he'd gotten a chance to explain himself, she'd actually be happy about it. Spike got his chance a few hours later when yawns began to overtake laughs as the favored break in conversation. Every pony was milling around the room, reassessing their new possessions and offering another round of thank yous to whoever was nearest. Rarity was next to her new piece of furniture, probably wondering how she'd get the sizable thing home on a snowy winter's night. 
Spike's many years of hefting twice his weight in books and luggage had barely been enough to get the box down the castle stairs. No one else was nearby, affording them a measure of privacy, as long as they kept their voices down. Hey, Rarity? Could we talk for a second? Rarity turned to him and smiled. Of course, Spikey. I'm so sorry that I doubted your intentions before. Thank you for getting me something simple. Something that's more of a project for me to sink my hooves into in my spare time. I'm glad you like it and everything, but... Well, that's not exactly why I gave it to you. Hmm? Then why? Spike took a deep breath and pointed to the spot on the back corner where the finish was worn away completely. I had to sand the writing off there, but you can probably still make it out. Rarity leaned down and examined the spot, the spot where a much younger Spike had scratched a message into the wood. Property of Spike. It's where I kept my gems. I've been saving them up for months so I could get you something really amazing for heart swarming, but after we talked... Rarity's ears folded back. Spike. I didn't mean for you to part with something so important and personal. I... I know I was trying to tell you what's really important about giving gifts, but I think I'm the one who needed to hear it. So I took all my gems and got you this. He held out a piece of paper, not unlike the one from the gift exchange. Rarity took it in her magic and looked it over. What is this? It's a receipt. My real gift to you is that I made a big donation to charity in your honor. Rarity gasped. <gasps> charity? Do you mean to say that you donated all of your gems? He leaned in to whisper. Well, kind of. First I left a big bag of them on Applejack's doorstep and one at Fluttershy's. Then I donated the rest. Rarity turned away and trotted out of the room. Spike nearly had a heart attack. He ran after her and nearly tripped over his own tail. R Rarity, wait! I, I thought this would... He found her in the hallway, dabbing away tears with a handkerchief. She embraced him as soon as he came near. Thank you, Spike. I, I apologize for walking away. I just... What you've given me is almost too much to bear. Thank you. Thank you for making this the best housewarming eve I've ever had. Relief flooded Spike's mind, nearly eclipsing the bliss of her touch. His legs went weak as all his worries fled away. He'd done it. He'd given Rarity the perfect gift. All too quickly, she pulled away, leaving him with only her radiant smile for comfort. That's what I wanted, Rarity. I don't need gems, not when I've got your smile. She blushed. Spiky, under present circumstances, I think I'll need to break the rules of my own game. I simply must give you something in return. He held up his hands. Whoa, I don't need anything. I... Her horn glowed, and the wreath hanging over the door lost its centerpiece. Spike stared at the mistletoe floating over his head, and then at the beautiful mare inching ever closer. His heart stopped, but she didn't, for some uncountable number of seconds. Joy itself flowed through their touching lips. Time didn't stop, no matter how much Spike wanted it to. Suddenly, he found himself standing on his own again, albeit on wobbly legs. Rarity was still gazing into his eyes, beckoning him to do or say something romantic. Instead... He asked a simple question. Huh. Can I get one of those every year? Rarity giggled. <laughs> that is a distinct possibility. Although I don't see why we should wait until next housewarming eve. Do you? I, uh... Uh... I, uh... Uh, no. What I mean is, do you... Want to go window shopping again tomorrow and maybe have lunch? I I'm kind of broke right now, but... She held her hoof up to his lips. My treat. I insist.
snow and lights all around. You stroll in the Songs about love and goodwill You start to forget 